Since I started in 2008, uh, I was 17 at the time. It really kind of originated from a Halo tournament that I tried to put together in my high school. Long story short, uh, I organized an event. Charity wasn't it wasn't a component, but just wanted to host a Halo tournament. Uh, and there was a police officer who belonged to like this media censorship organization called the Parents Television Council. Basically, felt like Halo uh, was corrupting the minds of America's youth, and that uh, video games, uh, kids were playing games to sort of train themselves to kill and. Um, just felt that our event was like a hazard to public safety in the school um, because it just wasn't a fan of the content of Halo. Uh, so we called up our superintendent and said all these things to her, and she shut down our event. So we had like 300 kids end up in this tournament. It was supposed to happen. Uh, it didn't really end up taking place. So we put together a new tournament for charity to kind of hopefully illustrate a lot of the positive things that can come from uh, when gamers get together and do something for good. We call it Gamers for Giving. Um, went really well, and at the time, as a high school student, I wasn't really involved in charity programs. But in hindsight, I don't think it wasn't because I wasn't. I don't think it was because it, I wasn't interested per se, as much as it was like the opportunity to be involved has never been presented to me in a way that I connected with. I think charity is sort of like that, where you don't have a personal connection or you aren't being able to like make that initial leap of faith to get involved in the first place. Sometimes it's difficult to. Well, it's easy to be unaware and just inactive. Um, so video games for me was that bridge to realizing its importance and. Gamers for Giving has kind of continued on since then. The uh, charity we have has its own initiatives. Uh, we built portable video game cards for kids in hospitals, send video games to troops overseas, and uh, this is sort of our annual fundraising event. So, yeah, the interesting thing about the video game community in general is that it's made up of a really wide range of people. And nowadays, especially, I mean, everyone plays video games to some extent, and if they say that they don't, I think then they just never have a game that they enjoy. Um, I mean, even my mom can take the so far. So, I think the activities that we host uh, kind of appeal to people for different reasons. Um, certainly, games like Peggle are kind of very family friendly, um, and everyone of all ages enjoys Peggle. Um, I think we kind of started enjoying it because a wonder game amongst the buddies and us. Um, but certainly, you know, younger kids can play it too, and um, it's quite a bit of fun. I think when you're uh, when you're witnessing the level of competitive play that's illustrated at Game of Thrones, you're seeing very high level competitors competing in something that they're very passionate about. And I think when you look across the board in any type of sport, that rings true for NFL athletes, for NBA athletes. I mean, when those guys are mic'd up, there are a lot of things that get, you know, said and probably shouldn't be said on TV. Um, similarly with our event, actually we try to moderate a lot of this back talk because it certainly can go to some even larger competitive gaming events than ours. Um, and people say very well the things to each other and then they'll still shake their hands afterwards. Um, we don't allow any of that at our event. Uh, we don't mind people like getting excited and maybe saying, you know, let's get it or something like that. Um, but the things are getting personal until we stop doing the that said, um, I think that's the nature of the game. I mean, people are very passionate about video games, um, and they really love competing. The people who come to compete in our tournaments are the people who, I mean, they sit on Xbox Live and they're with their friends or developing strategies, and it's not the same as, like, chess or, you know, Monopoly or, you know, board games to be played with your family, which are a little more, you know, just sort of casual. I mean, these are guys who come out, they want to compete, they want to win, um, and so you're kind of seeing that passion manifest in the surface when they're in the game of the game. My name is Rick Carlisle, I'm a marketing manager at College of Business, and I'm a senior. Well, when it, when it comes to like the shooting tournaments, for instance, you have like a lot of headsets that are really necessary to kind of get an edge and hear people creeping up on each other normally. Um, they have mix apps that allow them to feed each other's voices into their, into their equipment so they can all hear each other, right? And then with these guys with the, with the land back here, I mean, we got guys with, with $2,500 rigs with uh, they have gaming, uh, private cards, something like that. It's pretty awesome.